Amen, brothers. What a privilege it is to be in London, guys. I've missed you guys all, and greetings from Amsterdam. Uh, you know, I'm going to be speaking today, guys, about faith and boldness on campus. Turn your eyes with me to Joshua chapter 3. You know, I, it's been a great time being in the lowlands where we're fighting for people to be low before the Lord. And, and I think the biggest lesson I've learned so far being in Amsterdam is the lesson of humility. I believe that without humility, you will never, ever see God. And without seeing God, you will never have faith or boldness to go on campus. You know, being on campus in Amsterdam was pretty challenging from the very beginning. I went there with my tails between my legs, first of all. And I got in there like, okay, man, there's no, there's no one here. It's just me and the Lord. We're going on campus to build this thing. And uh, I've got zero campus students with me. That's great. And we get on campus and, and, and I see that the more I was on campus, the more I saw myself. But that's the issue. The more you see yourself, the less you see God. And the less you see God, the less faith and boldness you have. And it took me nine months to learn that lesson. I pray that it would take you only 15 minutes to learn this lesson today. Let's read in Joshua chapter 3. It says there in verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. I pray that you're not still in 2020, but you've crossed over to 2021 right now. It says, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. I pray you love receiving orders because that's how God kingdom works, amen, family? When you see the ark of the Lord, it says, you see it? When you see the ark. It doesn't say when you bump into the ark. It doesn't say that when you gradually walk your way to the ark, when you see the ark of the Lord of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out and from your positions and run from it, right? No, he says, follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. But keep a social distance. <laughs> because, you know, God is powerful. Keep a distance about 2,000 cubits. You know, we have two meters now in London. That's not even a distance. Between you and the ark, do not go near it. You can just follow it, but don't go near it. And Joshua, the man of God, told the people, consecrate yourselves today, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And church said, Amen. Amazingly, the man of God is leading these people from a camp to the real camp. Tells them in verse 16, it says, in verse 16, in verse 16, it says, the water from the upstream stopped flowing and it piled up in a heap of great distance away at a town called Adam in the, in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabath was completely cut off. And so the people, you could say the campus ministry, cross over opposite Jericho, the priest who carried the ark of the coming of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed until the whole nation had completed crossing on dry ground. It takes the ark of the Lord to build the campus ministry. You know, I don't believe that, you know, a lot of fun builds the campus ministry alone. I believe the presence of God built the campus ministry. And I want to lift up the London church, guys. You guys have done a great job in building the campus ministry in London. I believe that, that thanks to God using Michael and Michelle valiantly, that the church has set an example in building the greatest campus ministry in the European world sector. And, 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 and one thing I learned from that is to carry that on throughout the rest of the world, it takes Conviction. Joshua was a man of conviction. You might wonder, why am I reading Joshua? Because Joshua performed a great miracle that took two millions of people across the Jordan on dry ground. How did he do it? He had conviction in the word of God. Today I want to ask you, do you have convictions? Do you have convictions? Because you know when you have convictions, when you're alone. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 
I got sent out at the beginning of last year. And that was my test. Do I have convictions or not? You know, campus ministry is so fun. But when you're alone, that's when you know if you have convictions or not. I got one point for you today. My point is simply, convictions produce conversions. What is conviction? In Hebrew, the word means to express the idea, to argue, to prove, to be correct. I want to ask you, do you believe, do you correct yourself that the campus ministry is the way to build the church? Because maybe you might be like, I'm married, I need more married people. That's awesome. But let's get a campus first who would then get married. I mean, I'm thinking, well, I'm single. We need more single brothers and sisters. No, no, no. We need more campus to build the church, to be able to grow this church to where it needs to be. Amen, family? Amen. The Greek word for conviction means elexio, to refute, to usually suggest shame. And conviction only comes when you feel shame. When you get caught to the heart, like, man, Amen. I should have done this but I didn't do it. I should have grown in this, but I've not grown yet. I can do better than this. A guy once said, while they were saying amongst themselves, it cannot be done, it was done. And a guy said, if you're true to your principles, you have confidence, conviction, purpose, values. In other words, you have a future. You see, your future depends on your convictions today. Because remember thinking, well, maybe it's on Michael's convictions. No, it's on your convictions. Your future is on your convictions, not anyone's convictions here today. I want to persuade the church today. It takes convictions. You know, I missed this old challenge of Joshua seeing the Jordan. He sees the Jordan before him and sees two million people behind him. And he says, where do I go? You know where he goes to? The Bible says, it said, the ark of the Lord. What does that of the Lord mean? That's a great question today, right, guys? Well, what does it really mean? The presence of God. Only God's presence can build anything. Only God's presence can make anything move forward perform the greatest miracle. So today I want to ask you, do you have convictions on the presence of God in your Bible talk? Is God present in your marriage? Is God present next to you in bed? Is God present to you when you're sharing your faith? Or do you want to get to campus without God? I said, campus is really fun, right, guys? I see Paul Tulumba saying, make some more. Yeah, yeah make, we got to make some more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, we got to make some more, but without God, we ain't making some more. I want to challenge you that we got to have convictions on the presence of God before we can see conversions happen in this church. What does is, what, what is the Ark of the Lord mean? I mean, I'm asking, what does what it really mean? You know, the Ark of the Lord has five things in it. The first thing it has is the two stone tablets. What does it mean? I mean it shows that, hey, we're going to take two pills every day, the Old Testament and the New Testament every day. That we're going to be taking our tablets of the Word of God and getting convictions to produce conversions. Amen, family? But the Old Testament is a bigger pill, man. <laughs> you gotta eat that bigger pill a little bit more. And I wanna lift up my dear brother, Timo, there, who's from Amsterdam. And he has conviction on the word of God. He said in Amsterdam last week, he said, you know what? It's not what you see, it's about what can happen with what you see. And we had also in the Ark of Covenant was the iron staff. What does iron staff mean? It's that staff that everything that happens to you is God's comfort for you. The bad, the good, the ugly, it's God's comfort. So David said, the Lord is my shepherd. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. You know, being in Amsterdam has made me see a lot of sin in my heart, a lot of pain. I've seen my first guy that I baptized fall away right away after four weeks. Is that comforting? Yes. Because the Bible says, the Lord comforts me. That means in the pain on campus, in the pain outside campus, and everything we have, the Lord comforts me. 
Why am I saying this? We need conviction that everywhere we go on campus, everything we see is God's comfort for us. What's Aaron? I was a priest. Guess who we are? Priests also. But who's our high priest? Jesus. Let me explain. Jesus corrects us, disciplines us. We know, hey, that's God's comfort for us. Well, at least one of our sisters got baptized to Milo and Gongo. She preached last week. She said, you know what? Repentance is the only way you show God you love God. And I see, wow, wow, the campus has convictions. This is, this is a 23-year-old girl in the campus ministry preaching about repentance. In the Ark of Covenants was something called the pot of manna, where all the preaching we receive is God's word. Where all the insights you see, where all the Bible talks, the D times, everything we get fed on. Constantly being fed in the church. I believe our church is the most fed church in the world. Yeah. I believe we're sometimes too overfed in the church. Yeah. But it's not about how much you eat, it's about how much you do. Woo. Brothers, I want to just challenge you today. Is the pot of man of God's word giving you convictions or not? Because what will make us see conversions is convictions. And Brother Nam Sam said, you know what? He was he got baptized in the summer. His name is Miguel dos Santos Otero. A, 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 true, a true Dutch Spanish man. 18 years old, was baptized on his birthday, and was first year civil engineering student. And he got persecuted for five months by his dad. His dad said he's gonna kick out of the house if you don't leave that church. At 12 minutes, that came to his house, says, pack your bags, pack your clothes, you're leaving right now. Give you five minutes to leave. The first challenge he had, the Bible, his dad said to him, you know what, you, you've changed, you've become extreme. And you know what he did? He laughed. He was like, yes, I am in unity with Jesus. I tell you, Convictions will give us the boldness and the faith on campus, my family. And lastly, what I want to share with you is on the, on the ark was the mercy seat. That mercy seat where you can go to to receive mercy. You see, you know, when you're on campus, you need some mercy, man. But a campus without mercy is a fake camp to be on. And again, on the ark was the cherubim, the angels watching over you. I believe being in Amsterdam, I've come to realize that without God watching over us, we would not be a good church in Amsterdam. Yeah. Wherever you may be, we're on campus, man, family. Yeah. I want to give you a challenge practically. Don't be led by your emotions. Yeah. Don't be led by your thinking. Yeah. Don't be led by people around you that I don't even know the Bible. Don't get into discussions that don't make sense. If the Bible doesn't say it, it doesn't say it. If the Bible says it, it says it. And lastly, in Amsterdam I always say, you can't be spiritual unless you're scriptural. Let's all be spiritual by being scriptural. And to God be all the glory.